Hello, this is Marchin. Uh, so I'm on the Zoom call trying to reach you, Mark. Uh, please give me a call back 816-866-3217 or please join the Zoom. I sent you an email with all the info.
my BTS is Mark. Hi, Mark. This is Mark Shin. Sorry. Yes. Uh, do you have time to talk right now? Sure, if you like. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, sorry. Uh, can you? Are you on your email? Because I sent you a document, and um, it would be good if you can look at online, or if you're on a computer. Um, I have something that I got from Chris that kind of shows um, yeah. a color rendering of the building and your plumbing system. Yeah. And let's see if I can find that. Uh, so yeah, the, the thread from Marchin from Open Source Ecology, uh, I just sent you. Did you send me something? Yeah, I did. So it's, uh, it's a string of emails. That's like five emails in there. Jevant. I'm sure you've seen it. I don't see it. Let me get out and go back here. No, I don't see it. So, uh, M Manville at ibts.org. Uh, no, it's all going to inspect KC. Okay, so. Oh yeah, that. Oh here, let me. I can get into that system. Hold on. Let me look here. Here it is. Okay, yeah, I've got it. Okay, so question one, would system pass inspection everywhere if three air admittance valves are used? Yeah. You know, would, you be, would you be able to go on the, uh, the Zoom, Zoom call or? Yeah. Because I can, can also share the screen. Share some other things. Um, yeah, let me look at your. The drawings look good. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's your electric panel. Uh, yeah, let me. So, have you sent me an invitation? Yeah, I did. It's in the same email. So in the, let's see, in the email that I just sent to you, which yeah, you I seem to have found. Oh, the, yeah, just click on the link. Let's click on the former email. All the invitation info is there. Zoom, drawing Zoom meeting. So it's the email right before the one. Oh, you, here it is right here. Yeah. Okay. So passcode open source. If you click on it, click on it you should be able to join me and I guess the passcode is open source. O P E N S O U R C E. Ah, there, there, I see it. There okay. We go. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me switch over to the computer. Well, I've got somebody else here in the office. It may be best for me to stay on the phone. Okay. Okay. Um. All right, so let's take a look at, uh, yeah, let's keep on, uh, on the document. So, okay. Here, I can, let me try this. Let me put, see if I can put my headphones on. And be. Mm -hmm. See if this will work for me. Okay, now can you hear me? Yes, I can hear. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right, perfect. Thank you. Perfect. Um, you got it. You got it still. Mm -hmm. 
Can you hear me? I do. Okay, okay, great. Yes. Okay, well, let's, let's take a look at uh, the doc. And uh, if you go to slide number 17, just as you see the house, yeah, that's how it looks. Um, you haven't taken a look at my Global Village Construction Set TED Talk, have you? That's, uh, no, I haven't. <laughs> okay, you can take a look at that as well. It's in uh, background. Okay, uh, the floor plan. Uh, that's on like slide 19, 20, and 21, just so you have a reference for the house. But that's not super critical. I mean, the, the slide one is, that's where we start. So, okay. uh, let's take a look at slide one. Okay, is that the plumbing? Yep, yep. Plumbing? So, we'll get into other details, and maybe we can start with, but basically two, ba two bed, two bath, uh, vertical kind of system. Um, and I actually get into all those individual air admittance valves, but what I'm trying to do is do the single stack vent system, three inch, and then mm -hmm. use the air, three air admittance valves. So given this, the specs there, uh, I mean, do I need, even need them? Because um, I am doing two inch drains and they seem to be within what they say for the, the so-called Philadelphia system, where if you oversize the, the drains like to two inch, typically and and you have a one straight three inch single vent that's that's allowed so take a look at for example the second story um double sink vent is that needed now, there right so the drawings that you've sent me don't show uh, any plumbing on the second floor right so s slide number one right yeah, that's the first so floor. Second the, floor. So that's the first. You see the sink on the first. That's the first floor, and then the second floor is the uh, second floor bath sink that's labeled there. Okay. Well, the drawings that you've provided don't show it. A bathroom on the second floor. Just two bedrooms. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because that's that's the former version, and now the second story bedroom uh, has a bathroom directly above the one below it so we actually added well, that in yeah so this philadelphia system is not really discussed in the plumbing code okay uh i agree with you that if you oversize the uh, waste system and because of your proximity to the main stack i would i would accept it as being vented even though you don't have vents coming off of the fixtures uh, the air admittance valves are probably not needed um, but each jurisdiction is going to deal with it differently and of course the air admittance valves have to be left out uh, in the in the like the space under the cabinet so that they can be maintained because yep. there are mechanical device uh, mm -hmm. But I would agree with you that they're probably not needed. But I need to probably dig into it a little bit deeper. Where did you come up with this Philadelphia system? Because I was looking all, all over online, and I, I found it. Uh, I can show you everything. There's the, this is I read this in several publications online where they were discussing venting types of venting systems, and and I came to that, right. and then I looked at. So, oh yeah, there's a Philadelphia system. Oh, cool, excellent. It would save right. us a lot of work. Um, yeah. Is it possible so for you? To... I'm sorry. Uh, can I ask you? Is it possible for you to actually uh, see my screen? Because I can share my screen. Can you see the screen that's um, like on the? So you're still on the Zoom meeting there. Can you see the screen on your computer? Because I can't see you, but can you see my screen right now? Because I can show you. I can see. Yeah, I can see your screen. Okay. Right. Okay, well, so my, and while I agree with you that this looks like a viable system, if it's not discussed in the code, okay, okay. all the jurisdictions may not accept it. Uh -huh. Now we do see, like in an island sink, uh, they do allow you to go one pipe size bigger, uh, and you see what's, what in the industry is called a Boston loop. Yep, yep, um, I've heard about that. Okay, and so because it's it's two pipes or a pipe size bigger, uh, it allows the waste to run through and push the air out ahead of it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's and and those are allowed. 
Um, but then I think it, there's some discussion in the code that says it, it still has to tie into a uh, a vent within so many feet. Yeah, and the the distance is like for two inch were was supposed to be eight eight feet normally, and then goes into if you look at the picture here that it goes into the three inch pipe down down there. So yeah, but I mean I don't know I I'm not a code official so um, right. And everybody will look at this differently. If they have some experience in the real world, uh, there may not be any questions at all. But if they're, if they're new to the industry, and uh, mm. uh, you know, they may they may deal with it differently. I see. I see. Um, okay, so that solves that one. Uh, the second one, which is at the first floor bathroom, uh, which is actually on slide two. Uh, so according to the same, like if I've got two inch going to the air admittance valve and it's next to the main stack, um, is that, uh, once again, the question would be the same or, or is this any different or is this, I, you open? know, I think, see for the tub, uh, right there, I would almost make the argument that it's really kind of wet vented because it's so close to the the stack going through the roof. Um, I would think you you would be okay without the air admittance valve. But again, we can't, unless you put an access panel, we don't want to bury the air admittance valve inside the framing of the wall. Uh, yes, we do have an access panel, which would be a small See. like eight by eight inch panel, which would be both for the water shut off because the water system is actually back there and the service of the air admittance valve. Okay. I think they actually make a little enclosure they do. for the air admittance valve. They do. However, we wanted to do one single enclosure that would serve both the main shot sure. and this. Sure. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, All right. So would you suggest simply that when we go up to... So now, if we're building in Kansas City, Basically, if we have you as the inspector, then you, you're okay, and therefore we can build this without this valve. We're going to have to talk to the city of Kansas City. We don't have a contract with them. Ah. Um, okay. And the other difficulty in both Kansas City, and I think you were saying you wanted to build in St. Joe too. Correct. Uh, both of those cities require licenses for plumbers sure. and electricians. Sure. Mm -hmm. So you'll have to find someone that, um, you know, has a license that's able to work in the cities. Yep. So even though you're a code official, you still have to, I mean, you're considered a code official, right? Yes, I am. And you still have to ask the city itself whether they allow it. So you, they can't yes. can take your word because they have right. local ordinances. Exactly. I see. Okay. Some cities, uh, some cities actually prohibit air admittance valves. Certainly. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I know several people in Kansas City, and I can have some discussions with them. Um, but your licensed electrician and plumber uh, may have a better relationship with the inspectors, mm -hmm. uh, and may be able to get this approved. I see. Okay. So it's. Uh um, so both the question of the wet vent and the air admittance valve. Right. So in this, can you see my cursor? Um, yes, I can. No. no okay. I so instead can't. of putting the air admittance valve here, sorry, you're above. Sorry, I actually can't. You'd have to, if, if you're, if I oh, want to see your screen, can okay. you share your screen? Because I can. I, you know, let's go back. I don't need to, I can just talk you through it. Okay. Go ahead. Um, so here, where you have the air admittance valve coming off the top of this uh, two-inch mm -hmm. riser, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, it would be possible uh, to take that, put a, a 45 on that, and just slide over to the three-inch uh, stack going through the roof, and that would bend the tub. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, I could, um, I could. You know, an, air valve, an air admittance valve is like $30. Mm -hmm. 
and you're going to have a scrap piece of pipe and a couple of fittings that you could just tie that into the stack right there. You're so close. You're within probably less than 12 inches. You're right. So you're saying you see my screen like right there. Yes, I do. Yes. We could do that. Yeah. And then that would take all the debate out of that. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all the debate out of that is probably useful because we want to get through codes as soon as possible, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. So the suggestion would be just to tie that in. Yeah, that's completely doable. Um, okay. So. Uh, but in an in a ideal condition, we would take off the air admittance valve and use the wet vent, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. So let's move on to slide three. Oh, yeah. So out here I'm asking about the latch door access to the main shutoff if the AAV, if we use the AAV and we have the water shutoff. Um, because the AAV, it's not, I mean, it's readily accessible. It's like beyond the, does it have to be readily accessible? It's, it does a latch, basically a little uh, panel there. We just. Yeah. Uh, That's fine. Uh -huh. That's fine. That shouldn't cause any problems. Okay. And does that latch have to be vented? It has to have a grate on it? Because it's inside the wall? No. No, I don't think so. Uh, because really what it's doing. Um, you know, it's equalizing the pressure in the system and as water flows down through there it actually pushes the air out ahead of it and this just allows enough air to come in to make up for that uh -huh. so there'll be enough air in that um in the cavity in that, yes in that cavity to allow that yeah because i did see explicit mention that you cannot put uh, aav inside a closed cavity like uh, inside the right. airtight cavity Yes. Then the question becomes, what's considered airtight? Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they probably don't give us a definition of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so that's cool. Uh, moving on. Um, okay, so now to the sink, which is, um, yeah, this is what I'm looking at here. Um, for reasons of how you penetrate the wall, we wanted to do this at a 45 degree angle with a two inch um two inch 45 to the kitchen drain okay. um does that work for once again for our using the sure. three inch vent three inch pipe here as your vent system right so again that's something we need to ask the jurisdiction um if you look in the plumbing code it gives us some definitions of different um configurations they've come up with and how to vent them and it limits what fixtures can be on in that particular uh, makeup to meet that definition um so i'll have to i'll have to dig into that a little bit but no i think that would work fine and actually you could probably even run the two inch clear over to the main stack i don't know if you have to increase it to three inch where you have yeah, but that's, um, see, the, the thing is, uh, if we look at why that's a three, three inches, because behind it, we still have bath sink and the laundry. Um, so there's kitchen sink, but look at that, we've got laundry here, so we got to do three, right? Okay, okay, right. Mm -hmm. Now here, like, this is not accurate, I wanted to do this at a 45, um, and then... See, there's this once again, this this valve here. Like, do we need that? Uh -huh. Right. Because this distance here, and that's actually the. Yeah. So you 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 have some questions about this, but what about um, now? What about this? Um, no, not here. Uh, f here, this is what we're really talking about. Um, if this were not present, because it's three, three inch pipe, five foot long, and then 18 inches long here. Uh -huh. So that's the washer drain here. So I'm wondering, mm -hmm. 
And instead of adding the air admittance valve underneath the sink there, mm -hmm. if we put a T or a Y in the wall, and see where you make the jump from your uh, two inch uh, washer drain, and you increase it to three, yeah, right in there, increase it to three inches. If we put a Y in there and came up mm -hmm. above the sink and then ran over to the main stack and vented it there, you'd be able to vent the washer drain and the sink, I think, at the same time. Uh, yeah, exactly, except that's what we're trying to avoid, all those extra... Uh -huh. extra sure, I understand. Right, so, you know, you don't have to drill all the holes and you don't have the extra labor for running it. Um, so, yeah, I think you're okay. I would certainly buy this uh, arrangement. Mm -hmm. And again, I would give you credit for it being so close to the three-inch stack and with the oversized pipe like you're doing, I would give you credit that it, in the real world it's going to function properly. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And these are and so and so when we get to that point, then I'll have conversations with the local jurisdictions. Yeah. If we're if we're still involved in the deal, I'll go in and talk to them or call them, as I know um, the building official in St. Joe, and I know the guy that heads up the plan review in Kansas City, and so I can call and get their take on it. Yeah. 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 Now. There's not going to be a universal answer. See, this is, even though we have, we're supposed to have, see, before 2000, there were three model building codes in the country. And it made it difficult for people to, for architects, engineers, and contractors to move from one jurisdiction to the next. Mm -hmm. uh, Kansas mm -hmm. City was on the UBC, Overland Park was Boca, St. Joe was Boca. Um, and so the designers and the contractors could not keep up with all of the code requirements because the codes dealt with them differently. Mm -hmm. So in 2000, we created the International Code Council uh, and that family of codes. But every local jurisdiction has the ability to modify yeah. code section, which makes it unique to their jurisdiction. So there still has to be discussions um, you know, if you if you say, well, if you go to St. Joe and say, well, Kansas City approves this, mm -hmm. uh, then they say, well, that's fine for Kansas City, but we're not going to accept it. Yeah. You can do this instead. Right. right. So. Now, this would come out in a wash, so to say, because at the plan check phase, we would ask all these questions, correct? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is and we might even have the dis yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so okay. And now, since we're actually building it as a prototype, you know, we, we wanted to do it right. But what's your opinion right now that we don't, uh, with, with the I AAV would, is okay, but what about without it? I would give you credit. I would say that it's going to function properly. Yeah. yeah, yeah when you've yeah. got the oversized waistline, you're, yeah. you're relatively close to the main stack. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's going to be any issues at all. Right, right, right. Excellent, excellent. Okay. Um, excellent. So uh, here, the question five was for the the single stack vent system. They say they explicitly say they do not allow offsets. But here we've got a forty five degree like this. Is that considered an offset, or is that still vertical? No, I think that's fine. Okay. They just don't want it to run. Um, you know, over two feet, but it, sometimes in the real world, you have to have a bin and you have to have an offset to stay within the uh, the, the walls as right, it's exactly. migrating way up to the roof. So, exactly. no, I don't think that's an issue. Okay, right. yeah, yeah, that's exactly what's happening here. We had to do that. Okay, uh, excellent. So, we were, yeah, we were good on that. So, moving on to uh, question number seven. So we have an eight-gallon mini tank water heater. Uh, do you see any issues with that? It's a 
It's a is, it, well, is it gas or electric? It's electric. I don't think it's going to recover quickly enough to take a shower. Yeah, it's eight gallons. It's, it's got an hour recovery for eight, uh, for eight gallons. But what about when? So uh, does it and change the other the thing? Is water shaving shower heads? Well, it may, but mm -hmm. I I bet. Most people use more than eight gallons of water to take a shower or to fill up a tub. Mm -hmm. I know to fill up a tub, you're going to use more than eight gallons. Right. Uh, they don't recover, electric don't recover very quickly, and they're kind of expensive to run. They take quite a bit of energy. Right. Mm -hmm. Gas ones recover more quickly, but depending on where you are, you may not have the uh, availability to get gas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll have to look. At, I'll have to do some research on eight gallon. That just does not seem adequate for a, a shower or even to wash clothes. Have you looked at that? Um, for the shower, all I know is that if so, I you know I'll be the user case for this one with a 0.625 gallon per minute water saving shower head by Brickor. So this is Brickor makes these eco shower heads that are actually like really high quality, not not like the the piercing shower, but it's like a it feels like a high end shower but it's just very low flow. Um, okay. and for that, I mean I mean I take a shower in five minutes, so so I will be using like three three of eight gallons myself. Right. But but yeah, others yeah. um and, and there is a tub. There's a there's there a, tub a tub in here, yeah. right? There's a tub. Yeah. So how many gallons does a tub? Well, that thing is going to be big. That's like what, like twenty or thirty or. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, what is that that heater preset? What's the temperature? Is it like a hundred and twenty degrees or it's probably like less? Uh, I think you can preset it to where, but I think standard is whatever the standard. I, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, they set them, they preset them to like 120 or so, so that you don't, well, so someone doesn't get burned. Oh, yeah, range to 145 max. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 65, 145, and I think they come with preset like at 120. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Wow, it's only 120 volts. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like super efficient, and we can actually run this off grid with a six kilowatt. Uh, PV system that I'll tell you about a little. I'll be doing. Okay. I mean, this is. Well. That's why we wanted this because otherwise, you've got the on-demand electric. This the intent of the house was eco features like you can literally run this all, all day. Like in the daytime, I mean, for workable temperature, you're talking about 30 minutes. So say you're taking a shower and someone hogs up all the water. Well, I mean, 30 minutes is probably enough. Like one person after another. Uh, sure. Otherwise, otherwise it's like lukewarm water. But for lukewarm water, it's only like ten minutes, you know. Okay. Which is well, lukewarm is probably enough to take a shower. Yeah, I mean, in the summer it's absolutely no problem. In the winter, you, but people kind of take less showers in the winter too. So. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I'm going to have to do some uh, research on that. That's a new product I'm not familiar with. Yeah. Um, you, you may be just, you may be, now, you were building a prototype of this uh, on your land? Yes, we are. We're at the rough-in stage. So when this is finished, then you're going to be able to use it? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So I guess that'll be the test in the real world, just see how it does function and see if we need to do something different. Exactly, and for me, I know it's going to be good. I have experience. I have experience. We already have one of these, and when we had a workshop last summer, we had two people in a house, and they said it worked perfect. It was perfect for them. Oh, okay. Well, then that tells me more than anything I can read in a in an article. Mm hmm Yeah. If yeah. you have real world experience that it works, then that's the best to go with. Yeah, absolutely. But though it's a one data point and someone else might want like really long, fat showers and they're going to be like, no, this sucks. <laughs> I can't use it. Right. Um, well, my wife will fill our tub and she likes the water boiling hot. I can't okay. even stand it, 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 as hot as she gets it. So this would not work for her. Right. But that's just one person. Now, does the code allow it, though? That's that's the question. 
the code doesn't discuss recovery time. I think the code just says that you're going, and I'll look to see if it gives us a specific temperature. I think the code just says uh, that you need to have potable water and uh, you need to have the ability to take a, a bath and wash things. So I will look specifically at any language for hot water requirements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. So if we were to use that, which I mean, I'm planning on doing that, uh, which is, is the house is designed for that. Can we use this for a drain pan with this PVC adapter? A drain pan for what? Uh, but, well, as far as I'm aware, uh, any on-demand water heater requires a drain pan. And any heater requires uh, a drain pan oh. when it's like above, because like, this is actually in the cabinets. Right. Uh, you could, the other thing... Well, also for, so the, for the pressure thing, bypass. It does have a pressure, yeah, sure, it would have a pressure relief yeah, valve. So like, um, mm -hmm. You know... I wonder if there's a way to create an indirect waste for the pressure relief valve to discharge into. Um, That's the closest I, I thought of, yeah. We might be able to do something like that. Let me look at, yeah, I don't know why you couldn't use that type of pan yeah, um, I was wondering if they rec they they prevent like they have only authorized basically um, approved pans, but they I don't think so. Pans. I haven't seen anything. Yeah, I don't think that the code discusses a specific product mm -hmm. for that. I think it just generally says if you if it's on an upper level, yeah, uh, you know, or over over finished space like in an attic, yeah, uh, for example that you need to have a drain pan for emergency mm -hmm, mm -hmm. situations and even those need to be drained yeah you know, the drain pan needs to have a drain in it yes yes so here is this pvc uh fitting acceptable because typically they uh -huh. say that the drain has to be cpvc but the only I, I can't find any cpvc i just have pvc drain pan Why? adapters <clears throat> So when that discharge, when if that emergency discharge goes off, that water is going to be hot, almost steam. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very hot. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know if PVC would stand up to it or not. Let me let me look into that. Yeah, yeah, it should be. I mean, so what is it? What is it? That uh, pressure relief valve preset. What's the pressure? Oh, it's standard, like whatever. It's two. Uh, if like, it goes below above boiling, so it's a pressure right. temperature relief valve. Right. A standard is on any heater. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, and you know, you bring up a good point. I don't think I've ever seen a drain pan that had C. CPVC fittings in it. I That's think exactly there are right. That's, uh, CVC. Yeah. 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 So maybe they're thinking by the time yeah. so this thing discharges, a lot of it's going to go up into the atmosphere as steam. The water that does hit the pan, maybe they think by the time that it gets to the drain, it's going to have cooled down enough that the PVC will stand it. Well, that, that brings up the question, like, why, I, I, as far as I read, I was reading that the, the drain line even though the fitting is PVC, the drain line still must be CPVC. I think I read that somewhere. Huh. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, and as far as the glued connection to the wa washer drain, I mean, there's no controversy there, right? No. Because the trap is that this is our isolated, uh, indirect right. drain system right there. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's keep moving. <clears throat> Question eight. Okay, so now for second story venting, once again, it's the same question again. It's like I've got the AAV and then could we, because this is about four feet and this is about three feet, this is two, two inch, a little oversized, would this make it even without one with the AAV, which wherever they allow it, that's good. I mean, some jurisdictions won't allow the AAV at all, correct? 
That's right. Yeah. So yes. And we'll just have to look at that on a case by case basis. Mm -hmm. I think that I think the uh, air admittance valve is a perfect solution for this plumbing situation. Yeah. And without the AAV, do you think this would still pass the single stack vent system? Because it's a little oversized and then we go into the three inch. Um, right. Um Uh, probably, mm -hmm. again, I don't know, of course, I know you're trying to get away from having a bunch of fittings and right. other things, uh, and extra pipe, but if we came off, I'm just looking here, so where you have the 90 that turns down yep. and drops into the three inch, well, how about if we just ran that, put a, put a T there, and ran that straight over and tied it into three inch stack? Sure, and once again, the the consideration of uh, the extra effort here. So here we're, yeah, yeah. I mean, just two more fit, you know, two more pipes, three more fittings, all adds up. I know it does. <clears throat> uh, so what I would suggest is that we leave it like this, mm -hmm. and then when we run into that jurisdiction, yeah, uh, that says no. And here's the other thing that happens. Um, you know, you may get a plans examiner that okay. says, no, um, uh, you know, I'm not going to accept that. Um, but then when you get out in the real world and you, if the plumbing inspector, a lot of these uh, inspectors came from the industry. They were plumbers in a former life and they put away the tools because they got tired of working with them, and they got a job working for the city. Mm -hmm. They'll have a diff. They may have a different opinion. They can say yeah. Yes. Okay. But the unfortunate thing is, it's a timing situation. You may not know on the first project you do with them if that plumbing inspector is going to accept it. Therefore, we can play it safe by listening to what they tell us in the plan check phase and follow just right. that. Okay. Right. Okay. And then if you're going to do multiple projects in that town, then you can have a discussion with the plumbing inspector yeah. and get his input on the first project and yeah. right. use that That's, down the road. I mean, at the plan check phase, I mean, I can request to speak to the plumbing inspector, or typically they don't do that. Uh, you may be able to. Now, in Kansas City, uh, Kansas City is a big bureaucracy, okay. and you may never get right. to a plumbing inspector. Uh, and, the, and anybody that works in Kansas City is going to tell you the same thing. You may have one inspector that comes out to do your first rough in, and he fails you mm -hmm. and gives you a, a list of five things to fix. Mm -hmm. He may not be the one that comes back. As the next inspector comes out and says, well, yeah, it looks oh. like you got those five, but I oh. see these things need to be fixed. Ah. Okay. <laughs> and he will create another punch list for you. Okay. Uh, a friend of mine's an architect, and when his client tells him they want to do a project in Kansas City, he doubles his fee. Uh -huh. Because it takes, it's just such a struggle to get through there. And I like the guys at Kansas City. The guy that runs a plan a review department is a friend, and he's a good code guy. Mm -hmm. uh, he's an engineer, mm -hmm. uh, but he likes to put people through the process. Uh, so double the cost of what? Of inspection cost? So his, uh, no, his fee for designing the building. Ah. Uh, because he knows that he's going to have to negotiate Officials? Yes, yes, he knows it's going to be a struggle to get his plans approved through the um, Kansas City um, Codes hmm. section. I see. Okay. Well, that's fascinating. But even, okay, but how about this case? When the, when the plan check phase says this design is okay and you build it exactly as in the detail, then the inspector can't say no to, no to that, right? Well, you can make that argument with him. Um, and hopefully he'll buy into it. Sometimes they don't. Oh wow! Yeah, you know, there's wow. just this human factor that that plays into everything. We all want, okay. at the end of the day, we all want to end up with a code compliant building, but 
code compliant is really not a defined term and everybody has a different opinion of it. <laughs> so if you call, really? so for example, I, I was on, uh, so the International Code Council has um, code interpretation committees and I've been on those in the past and there will be 25 code officials on the committee. Someone like you sends in a, a request to ICC and says, hey, I want to use an air admittance valve here. They send that request out to the 25 members on the committee. And they say, you tell us what your opinion is. And they're going to get 25 different opinions. And then they have to correlate all those comments and get back to you and say, yes, you can, yes, ICC thinks what you're doing is appropriate, but the local jurisdiction has the final say. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and that's what they'll put in their comments. We think it's okay, but the local jurisdiction has the final say. They're not going to go against their local jurisdiction. Um. But are you talking about the plan check department versus inspector or international yes. codes versus? It'd be, it depends on who you're having a difference of opinion with. Mm -hmm. If it's a code check guy, if it's an inspector, you know, administratively, you have an appeal process. There's somebody that you up the line that you can talk to. Um, a lot of times they're going to support their staff. So when you get in a situation where that you can't get resolved, then you can ask the ICC for a, an interpretation. Okay. Uh, how how much time does that process for actually to go up to ICC take? A, a month. Process. Uh, yeah. At least a month. Yeah. Which so you're better off just so, to work. Yeah. And, and again, they're going to qualify their comments. They're going to say we think it's okay, but the local jurisdiction has final say. So you're better off just to try to to reach some kind of agreement at the local level. Okay, okay, no problem. <laughs> yeah, I didn't th think that was... I'm just good. trying to give you some real world yeah. background yeah. on what, you know, what you're going into working in, in multiple jurisdictions with a... <laughs> and I think this is a, I think this is a good project. I think yeah. it's, uh, it's needed, I think it's viable. You've certainly done your homework. Um, but unfortunately, it may not be cut and dry. Can I quote you on that? Sure. Excellent. <laughs> well, that's good feedback. Excellent feedback. Thank you. Um, so let's move on to question number nine. Okay, that was a mouthful. Okay. Bathtub properly vented. Is it vented here? Now here, I'm actually thinking that absolutely no problem because this is a dry vent above that mm -hmm. and we're just following just right. 1.5 will do right i think you're going to be fine yeah. yes okay I, I think we can skip that one then okay um 10. and overall any other comments or suggestions here for a two kitchen two bathroom system like this i mean we want overall the plumbing now so i want to turn right. to electrical yeah no i don't i don't see any any issues with that right. i think you're okay okay yeah yeah, and just one one comment on this in terms of I don't know how familiar you are with. Uh, have you built things as well, or? Oh, I was a home builder for ten years. Uh, and you were the actual. And before guy that, work? no, I didn't work with the tools. And uh, when I got out of college, I went to work for a um, a company. And we built apartments across the Midwest. Okay. So I've been on the I've been on the other side of the table. Yeah. Okay, I see. But just to comment on this thing, do, if we do this this uh, drain here, it's one of those that has the flexible vent, so I can actually align things without a problem, so that anyone can do this real quick without having to struggle. Um, do you see any issues with that? Both of these are the most flexible. Uh, as long as they're uh, as long as they're approved by yeah. the code. Yeah. And they'll say on there if they've been submitted to the ICC and if there's an, uh, uh, an evaluation report on it that it's been approved. Okay. Um, okay. 
I mean, this is from Menards. Any issues that you might see? I mean, it doesn't say if it's approved. Yeah, it, again, we'll have to find out who the manufacturer is and see if they have submitted it um, for oh, approval. So, so even at the level of um, you know Plum Pack, uh, at this level where Menards sells this, this may not be code code approved. Sure, absolutely. Oh. There's all kinds of products out there that have never been submitted to the ICC okay. or any other agency for approval. Well, we can it doesn't say that people can't sell them, okay. but the local jurisdiction, a local jurisdiction, may not accept it uh, as a code compliant product. Huh. Well, I mean, this because it doesn't say it's approved. I mean, it's probably not approved. Right. So, are you thinking we might have issues with it? Possibly. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Huh. Okay. And again, it's just going to kind of get down to whatever the local jurisdiction thinks. And maybe the plumbing inspector uh, will look at that and say, oh, yeah, I have no problem with that. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, uh, that's all for now on that. So let's move on to, right on to the electrical part. So this is the kind of box plug on neutral uh, combines system entry device. Um, this is not feed through. Can I make it feed through by putting in, like, can I remove this factory lugs and put on feed through lugs? Um, no, I don't think so. That's approved for that configuration, oh, and I don't think so they're going to let you mess with it. Oh, but, but you, you wouldn't pass that? Uh, I'm not sure. If I knew that that's what you had done, I'm not sure that I would. Okay. I see. All right. Uh, how about question? So the qu answer here is no. <laughs> Which is kind of uh, I would think that because this is not designed for that. <laughs> right. Uh, it hasn't come out of the factory for that specific use. So okay. Uh, question twelve. Can I can I connect upon rough in? I can. These are plug-in neutr plug neutrals with with specific lugs there that you can do the wires before plugging in the breakers. Uh, huh? Do you see any issues before? Yeah. No. Before connecting? No, we would, that, and that's what we'd like to see. We'd yeah, like exactly. to see all of the home runs landed yep. uh, in the panel. Yep. You don't have to because uh, we're going to approve the service, and if you just want to have a couple of circuits for convenience while you're finishing the construction, that's fine. Okay. Um, but yeah, we'd like to see them all landed at once if we can. Can we put the breakers on as well? We can put the breakers on if you feel comfortable, but you're going to have a bunch of bare wires on the other end, so you might be better off to leave the breakers off or out until um, you're doing your uh, final, you know, putting all the wiring devices in and making sure everything's safe before you energize it. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, t at this phase, it won't be with with grid power. Yeah, they'll be at final. So right. Are you saying that the breakers are going to get in the way for us or for the inspector? No, they're not going to get in the way for anybody. What I'm saying is, we're going to be able to see all the wires landed on the buses yeah. in the panel, whether you have the breakers in there or not. Um, but rather than having a bunch of breakers in there that someone could accidentally turn on once this panel's energized sending um, energy across the house to a box that doesn't have any device on it, just has three bare wires sticking out of it, is probably not a good idea. Yep, I understood. Okay. Um, okay, so now it gets into some controversy here. So uh, if we want to do PV, can I use... Um, are you a person that I can ask about photovoltaics? Because I wanted to do this um, transfer yeah. switch. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I want to do a transfer switch on the inside of the house, which would be right here. So on the first floor, we've got a transfer switch that's fed from a, a four a terminal block outside. So assuming we divide, uh, well, first of all, we do this. We got four aught coming in with some kind of a, an approved device. So we've got the feed going into the transfer switch, one from the grid, but the second one comes from the PV system uh, from above. Is this any issues with this? Typically, typically all that stuff's on the outside, and there's placards for first responders when they show up that they know that there's um, 
potential for two separate energy sources. Uh, so they don't pull the meter to the electric service and then go inside and, and uh, put water on a system that's hot from uh, a solar array. Mm -hmm. So usually all that stuff's outside. Okay. Um, if, uh, okay, so that would mean like a, it's a manual transfer switch. Yeah, switch from the other, to yeah, okay. the other thing that you'll need to have, you'll have to have a discussion with the power company because this is really in their purview more so than the building code. Mm -hmm. They're going to tell you how they want you to do this uh, so that they're comfortable with it. Yeah, man, they're going to give us trouble because this is not, this is just a, uh, we, we're not using a, a grid tie inverter here. This is a simple inverter system with a transfer switch. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's, con it's treated like a, effectively like a outside generator. Um, so maybe when we have the discussions, um, I don't know how to do Yeah. I don't know that we'd have to negotiate with them. Right. Hmm. Um, so if I had it outside and with pla proper labeling and all that, that it would have to be clearly visible that it's disconnectable outside. That wouldn't. Uh, do you think that if the box was outside and we could say uh, up for grid, down for PV, would that suffice? Or the, uh, you don't know that. That's that's just for them. I, I, I don't know that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's a can of worms here. Okay, do you know about terminal blocks on the outside? Would I be able to do a DIY terminal block where I've got the wire coming in like this? Like, say, say the power company was okay with that, uh, or would this also be a question for the power company? Because this is basically using um, either terminal blocks or using these lugs just to go from the four odd. Because actually, the condition for us right now is four aught supply, but we just need a hundred amps. So we're doing like six gauge or something out of that, uh, or more, more than six, it's like two gauge two or something. Um, so you could put, you could probably put a disconnect. You could probably put a disconnect there and uh, that would protect uh, the wire. That would protect the conductor Yeah. So you're just wanting to well, I was wondering, uh, facilitate of, changing wire size. Yeah, changing wire size. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So could I do like I was thinking? Okay, I'm going to the yeah. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to put terminal blocks on that. So that's an insulator, or this all has to be code, uh, basically approved parts. Because uh, you know this is going yeah. to be kind of a deal. This is and like so. Right. I'm not. I don't see a whole lot of. of terminal blocks like this uh, making the transition from one wire size to the next but you see it with disconnects like uh, for a, uh, you know, an air conditioner mm -hmm. however those would be like the ones for for aught to something smaller those are a hundred uh -huh. bucks this is like 50 bucks right yeah. so that I think again we need to have the discussion with the um, local jurisdiction yeah okay um, now so I assume that these terminal blocks are UL approved yep yep they will um, be. Mm -hmm. does it yeah uh, so that helps uh, but whether it's code compliant or not I'm not sure I'll have to look yeah UL for eighty six A B ninety C rated. Uh, does that tell us yeah or not really? Not it tells us it's UL rated, uh, UL approved, which is terrific. It puts you one step closer to getting it approved at the local jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. But the approval that's needed is what? Or factor mutual. We need to see what the NEC says about it, um, and what the local jurisdiction thinks of it. I see. So, so beyond UL, the chain of command is like the NEC, then local jurisdictions, the final. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So this this PV is a hairy question. Do you, do you you know anybody I can talk to about this? 
uh, that would mean calling the power company. Do you know any any people there that no. we can discuss? No, no, no. Unfortunately, I don't. This would go to we we work with multiple uh, district offices for Evergy and Spire, and every one of them is going to give us a different opinion. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the potential is there for. Yeah. <laughs> Save it for later. All we know is okay. the system works great here, and we've got we've done this before. Um, a well, transfer switch using like this, it's uh, but then again, we're not in a z zoned jurisdiction, so we don't. The final authority says, Yeah, that's us. <laughs> yes, the, the, the authority, <laughs> authorized jurisdiction, the authority has a jurisdiction, yeah. right? Okay, that's it. That's all the questions I have. Uh, so we're currently building this out in practice as far as the plumbing and etc. We would like. Uh, does it make sense for you to even come out there to to go through the, the inspection on the electrical, the plumbing? It does make sense for us because we want to say, hey, we actually had a, a guy who works in the local jurisdictions, uh, an inspector come out to, to verify this. That would be better for us just to know that we're for our peace yeah, of mind. I mean, I'll be more. I'll be more than happy to come out and take a look at it. Sure. Excellent. Excellent. So uh, that'll be probably uh, around Friday. Uh, but you don't work over the weekends, right? No, we don't. Okay. So if, if we're, we've got everything on Friday, what would be the latest time I could get you to, that you, we still uh, can have you out there on Friday? Um, oh, I could probably come out, um, you know, middle of the afternoon. When would I have uh, to when, let you know? One two. Uh, the day before. If you can let me know something Thursday afternoon, mm -hmm. uh, I'll be able to arrange my schedule to accommodate it. And what's the best way to contact you? So the, is the email the Inspector KC or M M M? -M, -M? No, I don't check that. We have other staff that <laughs> checks that. Um, okay. You can call me. Uh, Just call me on this this number. Okay. Because it, when it goes to the Inspect KC, it goes to it can go to me or it can go to the inspectors. But if you call me direct because you want me out there, then. Mm -hmm. I'll take care of it. At the 509-2145? Yes. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that that does it. So, yeah. Thank you for all the answers. It's, it's quite good. And we'll, um, so I, I'll give you a call when we're actually got this in place. Perfect. Terrific. Well, I appreciate you including us on this project, and we'll see what we can do to get it moving forward. Thanks. You Keep it moving awesome. forward. Yep, yep, yep. Bye. Talk to you soon. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.